November of 2016. I might not remember the dates because I don't honestly know, but I just never have remembered the dates as to when I was hospitalized. But I do remember my first MRI. I don't think I'll ever forget it. Being in an MRI machine for the first time is a little scary, I won't lie. But it's honestly not as bad as you think. My first MRI was a brain and spine MRI, thoracic spine if I remember correctly, upper chest area. When I became paralyzed and was hospitalized in 2016, they really didn't know what was wrong with me. And so MRI was kind of their first glance at why I was paralyzed. Obviously they checked my lovely brain. It all came back negative, but that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is to tell you about my experience in the MRI machine and the ensuing, I believe seven other MRIs I've had since then and how you can better prepare for your first MRI, your next MRI, whichever it is. I hope this video might be of help. If it is, like this video, comment down below. If you have any questions, happy to help in any way. When I was hospitalized in 2016 and was put on a gurney, driven by an aide down so many hallways to get down to the basement of the St. Boniface Hospital to get to the MRI department. I believe the journey took us over a half hour to get there. It took so long because I was in a gurney or a, like a bed and those corners were, some of them were so tight and I just remember it taking forever. Now, could it have just been five minutes? I honestly don't remember, but it felt like forever. Just the anticipation of getting to this MRI department and not really knowing what was going on at the time. When I finally got to the MRI department, I'll never forget the nurse coming up to me with this long, gosh darn piece of paper and sat me down and said, I have to ask you all these questions, answer them as well as you can. Obviously, I'd been in the emergency department for the last two days. Life was a little chaotic. I could barely, you know, I couldn't move. And so she started asking me all these questions and you're wondering what the point of it is. The reality is, is what I later found out was all these questions were simply just to find out whether or not I could even get into the darn machine. They need to make sure that you have absolutely no metal in you, on you or anything like that obviously I was in a gown I didn't have any earrings or jewelry or anything like that so that was fine but things like pacemakers I I UDs things like implants teeth implants hearing aids all these different things have you ever had you know uh, have you ever had surgery where there could be a potential of someone leaving something behind and not knowing it, things like that. As you go down this list, you're like, holy crap, I'm going into this machine that's gonna kill me. That's not the reality. The reality is they're just doing everything they possibly can to make sure they're asking you all the questions that you would probably not really think to think about. You're like, no, I don't have any metal on me, right? That kind of thing. And they're, you know, trying to make sure that they do their due diligence and that's all it is answer their questions. If you don't know the answer or you're honestly not sure which some of the questions you'd be surprised you may not know the answer to, or you may not be 100% sure, just tell them that. Be honest with them. They will check your records. They will check the system and make sure that there's no red flag. If you have something in you that could cause problems in the machine itself, you're gonna know. And so don't be too worried about that part of it. It's really, honestly, you're you're just trying, they're just trying to do their best to make sure nothing else goes wrong. Once all that's done, all the paperwork, because of course there's paperwork, then they hook you up to an IV for the most part. I already had an IV in, in this situation, but in my ensuing MRIs, they uh, would IV me. And most of the time they'll IV you if you're getting uh, the dye. This dye is there as a contrast. It's, it's, there to essentially allow the MRI machine to do its job to get the proper different set of imaging that it's trying to get. Do I know the exact scientific names of all these things? No, I don't. But I can tell you by experience that the dye sucks. For me, the dye makes me really groggy. It can take me two or three days to get the dye out of my system. And so if you are getting dye contrast and you've never had it before, if you have some side effects, don't be alarmed. They're 
they shouldn't kill you. Uh, if you have any issues, you're there long enough that if something were to happen, the MRI techs will be able to, to help you in any way they can and make sure that if you were to have an allergic reaction to the dye, you're obviously already at a hospital, so you're in good hands. Most of my MRIs have been with dye contrast, though I have had a few that have not. I think one of them actually only. For that MRI, it was really easy, honestly. Um, no needles, no nothing. They just put you in the machine. But for the most part, all the MRIs I've had have had dye contrast. And so I'll go through a list of all the MRIs I've had. I've had a multiple brain MRIs. I've had multiple thoracic spine MRIs. I've had multiple specialized MRIs to look at specific lymph nodes or glands in my body. So I've had a few of those done. I've also had two gastric MRIs done, which I will get to in a little bit. They're surprisingly the worst out of all of them I've had, but We'll get to that in a minute. So once they've got you IV'd, again, if you're gonna get dye contrast, they'll IV you. From there, what will happen is you'll usually have to sit around for a few minutes and or hours if they're running behind or have an emergency, which does happen. Be prepared to be waiting. And unfortunately, you're not gonna have anything with you while you're waiting. Once you go to the back and they've set you up, everything gets put into a locker, gets put away safe. So again, no phone, no nothing. You're just gonna be sitting around and waiting for your your time to come, essentially for, for your MRI. Yeah, it's boring. And so just expect that this is not the fastest test. It's not like going in to get an X-ray or anything like that. This takes time. So do anticipate being there for at least a good hour, if not two. Most of my MRIs, I've been, by the time I walk in the door to the time I leave, I would say the shortest has been an hour and a half. Some of them have been extremely long. I've been there upwards of three hours, depending on the MRI I was there for. So this is not a short test. And if it's something that you're doing during the day, don't necessarily expect to be going back to work by the afternoon. This is going to be a draining process. You're gonna have the nerves and things like that. And you know what, if you can take the day off, do it because it's, it's a bit of an experience. So once it's your turn to go into the MRI machine, they'll set you up on the machine itself. It is cold, it is flat as heck. It's not the most pleasant experience, I'll be honest, but it's not the worst either. It's awkward, it's weird. Take a few deep breaths, you're gonna be okay. Really, the reality is, is you're just being put into a machine to take some pictures like an x-ray and being plopped back out. Now, is it a little bit more involved than that? Yeah, but that's the reality. If you wanna bring it down to the reality of what it actually is, that's what it is. So you get put on this board, they will give you earplugs and put a massive set of headphones on top. MRI machines are very loud. And when I say very loud, they're extremely loud. These things are actually to protect your ears and to obviously make sure that the sound is as palatable as it can be. The other thing is it's very, it can be very claustrophobic to be in those machines. They're small they are not really meant to be comfortable. And so the instant they put you in the machine, you go like this because you're in a tube. They make you as comfortable as you can. They'll give you a blanket if you'd like, if you, if you want a blanket. I'm always really cold in the MRI machine, so I always ask them for two. They usually have a heated blanket uh, system with the hospitals. So they'll usually be warmed, which is really nice. They'll put a pillow under your um, your knees if they can. Now I've had mostly upper body MRIs and so these are all things that I've been able to get. Now obviously if you're getting a leg or something or in a hip or something MRI'd, I don't know exactly what that would look like, but I'm assuming that might be a little bit different. But essentially what they'll do is then you get pushed into the machine. From there you get given a little squish ball which is an emergency button to let them know that something's gone wrong. I've never had to push that button, so I don't really know what happens if you were to, but essentially what it is, it, it's supposed to essentially stop the machine and allow the tech to come in and help you. So let's say you were to have, if you're the, the type of person that has panic attacks or is very claustrophobic, 
Sometimes doctors won't even allow patients with claustrophobia to even have MRIs because it can be really bad triggers. Now, if you have to go through something like this, prepare yourself for it. Know that they will do things as fast as they possibly can, get you in and out as fast as they possibly can. You have to stay still, hold this little ball in your hand, the tech will actually be talking to you through your ear. So the headset that they have on to protect your ears will actually also have a system so that the technician who's taking your imaging is actually able to speak to you. So at any point you can talk to them and there's actually a microphone in the machine as well so they can hear you. And that's pretty much it. From there, you are literally just kind of at the mercy of the tech, the tech will walk you through everything else and they'll ask you, depending on the testing, will ask you obviously to stay still. The whole point of the MRI is to move as little as humanly possible. They will potentially ask you to take a deep breath and not breathe for certain images, depending on the imaging set that they're doing. I had a lot more of those during my gastric MRIs than my brain MRIs for the most part. Obviously the brain doesn't really correlate or get affected by breathing and so I didn't have to do those as much. Now back to the gastric MRIs. Before you can have a gastric MRI you have to take all this junk. If you want to talk about really fun junk you can make reference to my all my colonoscopy videos that I have but it's kind of the same stuff to be honest. The, it's essentially a dye but it's going through your digestive tract. It tastes awful it's not pleasant. I, there's no two ways about it. If you're the type of person that has really bad nausea, you can ask your doctor whether or not they'll let you have gravel or anything like that prior to your MRI. Sometimes they can't do it because you're supposed to be fasting prior to your MRI. Sometimes they can, so it really depends on the test. The thing that I learned just recently is that the specialists are the one that requests the images. There's not necessarily a specific set of images. They can request kind of what they want. Every MRI is a little different. I've honestly had some that have lasted 20 minutes. My last MRI lasted almost two hours. Yeah, that was a long time to be in an MRI machine, but most of them, honestly last a half hour to 45 minutes at the most. Time is kind of irrelevant because you're in this bubble. So just don't forget to breathe. You've got to breathe through this experience. You've got to just stay still and just tell yourself that it's not going to be for a long time. The tech will tell you when you're in your last set of images. The only advice I could tell you is that it's really not that big of a thing. I know that seems so nonchalant to say. The techs are there to walk you through it. The nurses are there to walk you through it. You have any questions, they literally do this all day, every day. These MRI machines don't stop almost ever. They've gone through this process so many times. They're pros at this. In trust that they're doing what they can to make this process as seamless as possible for you and as absolutely painless as possible. That's pretty much it, guys. Yeah, it's not the most fun test, but there are worse ones. The gastric ones are by far the worst because after you've taken all this gunk and sludge, they make you sit on your stomach to take the imaging, and that's really unpleasant. They do warn you that you can easily vomit and have moments of real discomfort. They try and make it as quick as possible, but that's what you're in for. I'm sorry if it's your first MRI because gosh darn it, had that been my first, I would have never wanted another one. But you know, you gotta do it. The specialists need those images and you gotta realize and keep in mind that the reason they're doing this is to really try and help you figure out what's wrong with you and be able to solve your problem. And so getting through this part of it is so critical to ensuring the success of a potential diagnosis or making sure that things are on track or you know making sure that you're going in the right direction and so just know that it's for the best that's kind of all i can say about that if you have any questions or want to chat through mris leave me a comment down below if you know someone that might be having an mri soon and is, is worried about it share this video with them it's it's one of those things that a lot of people go through and a lot of people wait a really long time to have these tests done. Just embrace it as much as you can and just don't forget to slow your roll and breathe through that process.
Bye, guys.